perfect for winter, you have to try this Sato Roasted Chickpea and Cauliflower Salad. Start by roasting chickpeas and cauliflower that are seasoned with za'atar and tossed with olive oil. If you haven't heard of za'atar, it's a Middle Eastern spice blend. They do sell it at Trader Joe's now, but I would get it in an Arabic market where it comes in a huge bag and is so fresh. While that roast, rinse off some onions so they're less sharp and build your dressing. Be sure to add some water in there so it's drizzleable. Is that a word? Build your salad with kale, cucumbers, toss and enjoy. Chicken stuffing casserole, it's what's for dinner tonight. You're gonna take a greased casserole dish and you're gonna add in about one pound of chopped rotisserie chicken breast. You could also use pan seared chicken or oven baked chicken. Top it with a can of cream of celery soup. You could use cream of mushroom soup, cream of chicken soup, kind of whatever you want. Make it your own. Spread it out nice and even. You're gonna take a box of the stuffing mix, make it to prepare it, and then you are going to spread that out over the um, chicken as well. I normally use low sodium stuffing mix. I find that the regular is just too salty. Then you're going to top it with some cheese. I use slices of provolone. You could use uh, Swiss or cheddar. Those would work great as well. And then you're going to bake it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at 375. You're just trying to warm it through. You're not trying to actually get everything cooked. Um, and this is it. It is so delicious, so tasty, um, really comforting and really quick and easy. You're going to want some of these low-carb, keto-friendly nachos. First, grab yourself a plate or a bowl. And then for the base, I'm actually using these Flock chicken chips. They're zero net carbs, super crispy, crunchy, made from chicken skin. Here's what the inside looks like. And here's what they look like close up. Use that as the base. I'm adding some sour cream, some fresh red onion, some tomatoes, and fresh cilantro. Now, you can use whatever you guys like. Also adding some heat here with some sliced jalapenos, drizzle some more sour cream, and here's what it looks like. Absolutely delicious. Who is ready for the absolute best buffalo cauliflower tacos with cilantro crema? If you said yes, then the first step just involves adding cauliflower to a sheet pan with some hot sauce, salt and pepper, and garlic powder, and baking until nice and crispy. After it's out of the oven, add a little more hot sauce for flavor. Then make the cilantro crema by adding all the ingredients to a blender and blending until smooth. After that, it's all about assembling the tacos however you want and serving. You can find the full recipe on my blog. Enjoy! If you're someone who's gluten-free or just finds bread bloats you, this is an absolute game changer. This is the perfect dinner or lunchbox meal and is kind of like a loaded sweet potato and a hot dog. Let's make Taco Bell's Fiesta potatoes. Wash two pounds of potatoes and boil for 20 minutes. Cut into one to two inch pieces and then toss in a quarter cup of canola oil. Then I'm gonna toss them in this flour mixture. I have the ingredients written right here. And then I'm gonna bake on 425 for 20 minutes. Once they come out the ovens, they should look nice and golden like this. And then top it off with your favorite nacho cheese, sour cream, and green onions. And enjoy. Today's keto recipe is craft chicken casserole. And keep in mind, I doubled this recipe. You're gonna start by cooking your chicken however you prefer to do it. I did it in my crock pot and let it cook while I was at work. After several hours of cooking, it was nice and shredded just how you need it. Next, cook some bacon and then get a pan ready and sprayed. Spray your shredded chicken into your pan and next we were going to crack six eggs, mix this up and add in three fourths cup of heavy cream and also three fourths cup of ranch. Again, keep in mind, I doubled this recipe. Pour this mixture over the top of your chicken after you've laid some bacon down and then cover the top with shredded cheese. Cook this in the oven at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. That is it you guys, this is one of my favorite recipes. It's great for meal prep and I hope you exactly like the restaurant. Try it out. These are the easiest and best scalp potatoes on TikTok. To a pan over medium heat, going with a couple tablespoons of butter, flour, and garlic. Now you're using two cups of milk total, but a half a cup of milk at a time, mixing in between. Add your favorite seasonings, kosher salt, black pepper, whatever you want. Bring this to a boil. Now over to a greased up baking pan, you are going to lay down some thinly sliced Yukon gold potatoes. And then layer over top some cheese and then your cream. And then repeat. Potato, cheese, cream, potato, cheese, cream, potato, cheese, and then the cream. And this goes 375 degrees for about 45 minutes. I couldn't believe it. Like, comment, and follow me for more. 
This super fast and easy Cajun garlic butter shrimp is absolutely delicious. It's like a shrimp boil, but on a sheet pan. It takes 15 minutes total to make. You've got the corn, you've got the seasoning, you've got the buttery shrimp, everything you need right here. So we're gonna start with some melted butter and our shrimp. You can do shrimp with the shell on or shell off. It doesn't matter whichever one you prefer. And then we're gonna do some garlic, lots of fresh garlic. We're gonna do some fresh lemon juice. And then we're gonna do some ears of corn that you've sliced into pieces so they cook nice and fast with the shrimp. And then we're gonna do some Worcestershire sauce. We've got some seafood seasoning. We've got some crushed red pepper flakes, some smoked paprika and dried oregano. And then we're gonna add in our bay leaves right in there, just like you would if you were doing a shrimp boil. And then we're gonna add more butter right on top. Bake it and it's done. It's so easy. It bakes in like 10 minutes. That's it. For this easy dinner idea and more, go to easydinnerideas.com and like and follow for more easy dinner recipes. Let's make low carb sushi. So start by laying down four pieces of smoked salmon, the bigger the better, and coat it in some nori seasoning and everything but the bagel. Pat it down with a piece of plastic wrap, flip it over, and start filling it with some cream cheese, cucumber slices, and avocado slices. Then very carefully tuck and roll it and cut it with a super sharp knife, dip it in some soy sauce. It is so good. If you guys try it, be sure to tag me and hit that follow button for more easy recipes. If you know me, you know I love my stacks. Stacks of zucchini, stacks of potatoes, stacks of cash. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I wish. But today, let's just focus on the zucchini. Start off by slicing your zooks really thin with a mandolin or a knife. Next, you're gonna dredge them first in the eggs, then the Parmesan cheese, and then just coat the top and bottom of the stack in seasoned flour. Bake them for 40 minutes at 400 or until golden brown and crispy. I put together a quick dip of mayo, lemon, garlic, and onion powders, salt, and pepper. That was the best part. Love your life. This is one of my all-time favorite side dishes. It's keto coleslaw. It's super healthy and delicious. You're going to start with your wet ingredients, mayo, Dijon mustard, apple cider vinegar. Add in some salt and pepper. Then add in your keto sweetener, your onions, mix it together, add in some bacon, and of course, some cheddar trees. We don't call this loaded coleslaw for nothing. Stir it in with your cabbage, your chopped cabbage, and oh my goodness, it's delicious. These are the Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuits, but so much better because you get to eat all of them. In a large bowl, start off by combining two cups of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of baking powder, two teaspoons garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix, set aside. Now combine a cup of buttermilk and half a cup of unsalted butter that's melted. Pour into a dry ingredients and stir till just combined. The dough might look a little rough, but aren't we all? Now add a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese and fold it in. On a lined baking sheet, scoop out the dough so it's about a fourth a cup each. You should have 10 biscuits. Now bake at 450 for 10 minutes till golden brown. Meanwhile, combine three tablespoons of melted butter, a tablespoon of freshly chopped parsley, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix it together, and then once your biscuits are hot out of the oven, brush it right on top. They are crispy on the outside, soft and cheesy in the middle, and so flavorful. Now that is a delicious bite. Save this video for later and like and follow for more recipes. Bacon wrapped jalapeno cheese fatty. Oh yeah, let's do this. We're gonna start by making a simple bacon weave. Next, we're gonna take some ground pork, mix that with some seasoning, and put that on top of the bacon weave. We're gonna stuff this with cream cheese, cheese, garlic, onion, jalapeno, and scallions. Wrap that all over. We're gonna set that into the smoker at 275 for two to two and a half hours, making a simple keto-friendly barbecue sauce to glaze it with, and we're ready to go. Slice into this guy. Let's eat. Find this recipe on my blog. Cheers. We've been making videos and recipes with Trader Joe's stuff for about a year now, and this is by far our best recipe. It's our Honey Aleppo Puff Pastry Pull Apart. So we're gonna start by mixing cream cheese, Honey Aleppo, and Parmesan cheese in a bowl. Then add your shredded chicken and add as much sauce as you want. Then get your puff pastry sheet and add the chicken mixture into the middle, and then slice as you can see here. And then once you're done pulling out the corners, you fold the tops down over the chicken and then start braiding the little strips of puff pastry over the chicken mixture. Then once you're done with that, we're gonna get melted butter, garlic, parsley, and then mix that up, and then brush it on top of the chicken mixture. And then bake at 375 for 25 to 35 minutes or until brown. This really is amazing. If you try one thing from our page, this should be it. Let's turn this into this. I love this trend, super easy and you can do anything. 
So I have some fresh mozzarella. We'll layer that out. And I'm going to add some Roma tomatoes and some nice fresh basil. A little more cheese. Now don't worry about all that moisture in there. That evaporates. And when you're done, you're left with this like super crispy goodness. Look at that. Man, listen. Oh, what a treat. Just a little pesto mayo is all you need. Cheers, everybody. If there's one thing that you guys try that I've made, let it be this, lasagna soup. I mix together a pound of ground Italian sausage, two to three cups of my favorite spaghetti sauce, one box of chicken broth, and half a box of beef broth. I crushed up a box of lasagna noodles in there. Just make sure you crush them up smaller than I did. I left them too big. And then I poured in a can of diced Italian style tomatoes. And I just seasoned that with a little bit of each of these seasonings. I brought that up to a boil and then I turned it down to simmer, pushed all those noodles down and covered it for eight minutes. On the side, I mixed together some ricotta cheese and some shredded mozzarella and Italian style blend cheese with a little bit of seasonings. And then after the eight minutes, I added in one cup of heavy whipping cream and some of the ricotta mixture. And I just let that cook down for another two minutes. And then you can just top your bowl with some more of that ricotta mixture. This is the best thing I have made in a long time. It was so good. Trust me, it was good. <laughs>